10 Steps to Creating an Effective Safety Program in Your Workplace. Hi, I'm Howard Thomas, Safety Services Supervisor for Chesapeake Employers Insurance. In this webinar, I will guide you through the steps to creating and maintaining an effective safety program. Let's get started. 10 Steps to Creating an Effective Safety Program in Your Workplace. The 10 steps are, number one, ensure management commitment to safety. Number two, designate responsibility for safety. Number three, determine the safety requirements for your workplace. Number four, conduct a hazard assessment of your workplace. Number five, develop a written safety policy that includes both management support and employee involvement. Number six, ensure two-way communication about safety. Number seven, correct identified hazards. Number eight, regularly train your employees on safety topics. Number nine, keep your workplace hazard free. Number 10, keep your program periodically and keep it up to date. Step one, ensure management commitment to safety. A commitment to safety is the first and most important step management can take to protect their employees from accidents and injuries. To realize the benefits of any safety program, the company owner or CEO and senior management must be truly committed to safety. Their example will create the environment for a positive safety culture throughout the organization. In an organization with a strong safety culture, management's commitment to safety is based on the understanding that prevention of injuries is good for employees and it is good for business. All injuries can and should be prevented. Legally, economically, and morally, management is responsible for the safety and well-being of its employees and for maintaining a safe and healthful workplace. Supervisors can be held accountable for the safety of those who report to them. At the same time, every employee is responsible for performing his or her job duties safely. Training employees is essential to a safe workplace and all exposures can be safeguarded. Step two, designate responsibility for safety. If you've chosen an individual to be responsible for the safety and health of your organization, that person should have the experience, qualifications, and authority to do the job. This individual must be credible, respected, and knowledgeable about the organization's business operations and must be given the time, authority, and resources to develop an effective safety program. If you've opted for a team to be responsible for the safety and health of your organization, the safety committee should contain representatives from top management, middle management, line management, and the employee workforce. If you're a small employer with 50 or fewer employees, perhaps your safety committee consists of three to five members. The committee should function as a team and meet regularly to discuss safety, production, and maintenance, and general issues affecting the company. A chairperson should have overall responsibility for the actions of the committee and should report back to the business owner and or top management. The activities of the safety committee should be documented and made available to all employees. The workforce should feel they have some control over their workstations. They should be invited to suggest improvements to policies and procedures where their work is concerned. Step three, determine the safety requirements for your workplace. Become familiar with the safety and health requirements of your company's operations, equipment, and physical location. Resources that can aid in this include OSHA or MOSH laws, regulations and standards, equipment manuals, chemical inventory, existing safety and health materials, employee capabilities, and your company's accident injury history. Step four, conduct a hazard assessment of your workplace. Identify any situations that present hazards or are in violation of any laws, regulations, or standards. Pay particular attention to any areas which prior research indicated were potential problems and determine if a problem still exists. A comprehensive baseline survey of the work and working conditions at a worksite permits a systematic record of the hazards and potential hazards that exist. The employer may wish to involve in this step a representative from MOSH, an insurance carrier such as Chesapeake Employers, or a private consultant. As the hazard survey proceeds, note areas where additional investigation and expert consultation may be necessary. For example, monitoring levels of airborne chemical substances or noise or additional research on equipment or chemical substances may be required. Also note conditions that might be alleviated through employee training and education. Remember to pay particular attention to those areas identified as having significant incident occurrences in the past. Also note areas where required personal protective clothing and equipment or PPE is needed. Remember to provide for regular safety and health inspections. During period Periodic inspections identify new or previously missed hazards and failures in hazard control. 
Question whether the changes made to eliminate the original hazard may have created any new hazards. When initially identified hazards are under control, attention can be given to the intensive analysis required to recognize less obvious hazards. Subsequent comprehensive surveys provide an opportunity to step back from the routine to look for new hazards. Step five, develop a written safety program. The business owner, CEO, writes or endorses the safety policy or mission statement. The policy should stress the commitment the company has made to promote safety and prioritize safety among the company's strategic initiatives equal to other business goals. Safety policy and procedures should be clearly stated and understandable. It is best to put them in writing as the written material provides a historical record that can be reviewed and revised periodically and also can serve as documentation of site-specific requirements. The safety program should always include prompt injury reporting requirements and be clear as to who should do the reporting. Preferably, the safety program should also include provisions for returning injured employees to work when medically feasible to do so. The safety policy mission statement should be written in clear and precise language and should be no more than one page long. It should be the first page of any safety manual or program. It should be read by or explained to all employees. Step six, ensure two-way co communication about safety. To build an effective safety program, management should communicate regularly with employees. Communication should travel easily in both directions, management to employees and employees to management. An open door policy, suggestion boxes, access to safety committee members, and other methods of communication are all encouraged. Employees should be allowed to approach executive leadership with questions or problems relating to their job or safety. Employees should be encouraged to bring their suggestions for safety and production improvements or changes to their immediate supervisors or to senior management. Management should show interest in the employee's suggestions and follow up with them whether or not those suggestions are implemented. It is wise to also document all safety communications. Step seven, correct identified hazards. Hazards, once recognized, should be promptly abated or controlled. Hazard abatement is an essential activity. All available resources should be devoted to this objective. Recognized hazards might constitute violations of laws, regulations, and standards. They could also result in property or pr production loss. Most important, these conditions present hazards to employees that could result in injury, illness, or even loss of life. When correcting identified hazards, it is important to develop a plan of action and a method of tracking the correction of all hazards, correct all identified hazards, implement interim protective measures while taking corrective action, provide all required PPE, and comply with all requirements specified in equipment manuals. Employee involvement can also help. When there are, are alternative ways to address a hazard, effective managers have found that involving employees in discussions of methods can identify useful prevention and control measures, serve as a means for communicating the rationale for decision making, and encourage employee acceptance of the decisions. Correction of some hazards may take a long time. Interim measures may be necessary. For those items that cannot be corrected immediately, an effective safety program involves interim measures for the protection of employees. These should include advising employees of the existing hazards and how to avoid or minimize the danger while corrective measures are being taken. Interim measures can include requiring the use of PPE, installing temporary guarding, posting warning signs, and taking certain pieces of equipment out of service. Step eight, regularly train employees to perform their jobs safely. Most employers must provide some training for employees. Chesapeake Employers Insurance encourages employers to provide training on employee emergency plans and fire protection plans, personal protective equipment, all mechanized or motorized equipment used in your operation, Remember, all new employees need training prior to starting work that would expose them to hazards. Transfer employees will also require training whenever they are exposed to new hazards. Employees should be trained on all safety procedures and hazard identification awareness as part of your organization's new employee orientation. We recommend ongoing training, schedule regular safety training sessions or toolbox talks. Be sure to maintain documentation or training topics and keep records of all employees who attended. 
Employers also must inform and train employees about the company's safety and health program, how it benefits employees, and what is expected of employees to make the program work effectively. An employer should ensure that all employees understand the hazards to which they may be exposed and how to prevent harm to themselves and others from exposure to these hazards. A thorough understanding of the hazards and their prevention will affect employee acceptance and use of established safety and health protections. Training for this purpose is reinforced by encouraging attempts to work safely and by positive recognition of safe behavior. Step 9. Keep your workplace hazard free. Once recognized hazards are corrected, take steps to ensure that the workplace remains hazard free. Develop work practices, administrative controls, work rules, and emergency procedures. Schedule regular inspects, inspections to check for optimally performing facilities and equipment and to prevent hazardous breakdowns. Additionally, all workplaces must have provisions for emergencies, including basic first aid and a plan to address fire hazards. Step 10, review your safety program periodically and keep it up to date. At this point, much of what an employer must do to implement an effective safety program has been accomplished. The employer can now attend to program maintenance, including maintenance of the program, documentation of the program details, addition of new work practices and hazard controls, and continuation of enforcement. Be sure to continue to review the following. Written hazard communication plan, emergency procedures, administrative or engineering controls, program elements and new processes, and loss history. Required postings for employers. Be sure to post the following in a conspicuous place in your workplace. The WCC's Employers Posting Notice titled Workers' Compensation in Maryland. This is an 8.5 by 14 inch poster in both English and Spanish. It is available on the Maryland Workers' Compensation Commission website at www.wcc.state.md.us. MOSHA's private sector posting notice titled Maryland Occupational Safety and Health Act, Safety and Health Protection on the Job. This is an official Maryland document featuring the state seal. It is available on the Maryland Occupational Safety and Health website at www.dllr.state.md.us. Additional considerations. Employee selection and hiring policy. Establishing qualifications and prerequisites for all jobs and developing written procedures for selecting and hiring new employees can save your company time and money in the long run. You want to hire your next star employee, not your next worker's comp injury. Employee selection and hiring criteria may include pre-employment information such as a formal evaluation of skills and abilities, reference checks, MVA checks, and pre-employment drug testing. A written job description explaining in detail the function and expectations of the job. Pre-placement physical examination if this is an applicable condition of employment. General company rules and physical workplace characteristics. Return to work or transitional duty program. As soon as your worker is able, it is in everyone's best interest to return him or her to work in some capacity following a work-related injury. Chesapeake employer's experience shows that the longer an injured worker remains away from work, the more difficult it is to return him or her to gainful employment. And returning to regular work usually occurs more quickly when transitional modified duty is offered. With a return to work program, the employer identifies alternate jobs for an injured worker to perform. The employer must also have the treating physician's medical authorization that the injured employee is physically able to return to work on a part-time or mo modified duty basis. Drug testing policy. Chesapeake employers strongly supports comprehensive drug-free workplace programs, especially within those workplaces involving safety-sensitive duties like operating machinery. A comprehensive drug-free workforce policy ideally should include four types of drug testing. Pre-employment drug testing, random drug testing, post-accident drug testing, and reasonable suspicion. More information can be found on our website. Contact Chesapeake Employers Insurance for assistance. Developing an effective safety program takes time. It involves a large commitment on the part of the entire company. All this additional work pays off. 
However, when it results in a positive attitude towards safety and a reduction in accidents and incidents in your organization. Chesapeake employers can serve as a resource in obtaining information and acquiring answers to our policyholders' questions. For more information, I encourage you to consult our website. You may also take advantage of our Safety University online.